What's going on? This is Magic Mitch the Food Adventurer and in this video you're going to find out if I have what it takes to finish another fish and chips challenge in record time. And this is day 23 challenge number 15 of this tour across the UK and Europe. And for this battle at hand I'm at Mother Hubbard's fish and chip shop in Wrexham Wales taking on the 32 ounce fish and chips challenge. And as the name implies there's a huge 32 ounce piece of fried cod. Then there's also 15 ounces of chips, which I'm pretty sure that there's more in this case, but anyways. Then you have some bread, then you also have four side items, which include mushy peas, curry, beans, and brown gravy. But unlike the last fish and chips challenge I did, you can't mix and match these to your choosing. You're just going to have to buck up and sample each one of these in this fish and chips challenge. And I'll let you know how I personally ranked each one later on in this video. And finally, you do have to finish a bottle of soda with this fish and chips challenge. Now another difference with this fish and chips challenge and the previous one I did, this one only has a 20 minute time limit, which is not a lot of time, and is probably why only one to two other people had actually beaten this challenge prior to me taking it on. But if you're able to become one of those select few to beat this challenge, you are rewarded with a free meal which costs 14 British pounds, and you get your picture up on the wall of fame. So much like the previous fish and chips challenge I did, I was looking to have a repeat performance here, including beating the record which was just set by Randy Santel with a time of 14 minutes and 45 seconds. And again, I used a little pre-game strategy beforehand by lathering up that bread with some of the gravy so that it would soak into the bread in order to take it down faster. And this time around, I did end up cutting the fish into sections just so it would cool off faster because it was ridiculously hot in the center and do I really have anything to gain by just absolutely obliterating the inside of my mouth? I definitely do not, so why would I want to do such a thing? Now when it comes to my thoughts on this food challenge, in terms of the setup, I'm giving this one a thumbs up. Now with that being said, some people do ask about my thoughts on challenges where they're just shy of the gold standard, which if you don't know is getting the meal free, a free shirt, and your picture up on their wall of fame for completing a restaurant food challenge. And in like this case, there's no shirt for winning, so it's not quite the gold standard, but you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm not one who's going to absolutely obsess about getting t-shirts, and in my opinion, getting the meal for free is what's most important because I think that's the more critical factor for properly incentivizing food challenges, especially since you have to eat all this food in such a timely fashion. But also for other eaters like myself who like to do back to back food challenges or even go on tours, it does help keep the cost of tours down to a minimum, and really in all actuality, while I'm traveling around with my backpack, I don't really need to carry more shirts in my backpack, which actually, I think this would be a good time to add this little fun fact. So have you seen that green backpack in the background? That's the backpack I use while I'm traveling on these international tours. And I keep all the shirts I've collected during this trip in there. So it does tend to get a little heavier as the trip progresses, especially if you've been acting like a little fatty and packing all kinds of unnecessary treats in there. But there's usually a checkpoint sometime during the tour where I'm able to take all the shirts that I've won and send them home. And that clears up a lot of room for, you guessed it, even more shirts. Now getting back to my thoughts on this challenge, in terms of the taste, again I'm giving this one a thumbs up. Now with fish and chip challenges, it's so hard to go wrong with these. Granted it could be because it's typically fried cod, but regardless, I don't care, it's delicious. Which is why I'm always happy to embark on these battles against restaurant seafood challenges that include fish and chips. It's one of the types of challenges where I know I'll thoroughly enjoy the chips, as they're a bit on the softer side so they won't cut up your mouth. And also the bread with the gravy, again just like last time, it was fantastic and it actually kept warmer than I thought it would this time around. And as it goes for the sides, now that I've tried all four of these sides, here's how I'd rank them. Coming in at number 4 is the curry. Overall I just didn't care for it, I'm not against it, but it's just something I generally would not want to have with my fish and chips. As for number 3 that's going to be the gravy, again it's not the worst, just not my thing. And it's actually not something I'd probably have unless it's required for a food challenge. As for number 2, I'm going with mushy peas. They're super easy to eat and they don't have a strong flavor. And to be completely honest, I'm not going to shy away from any opportunities to get some veggies in my diet while just hammering down so much fried food. And so finally, coming in at number 1 are the beans. Now I'll admit they're not the easiest to eat of the 4 sides, but I do find them to be the most enjoyable. And speaking of enjoyable, something I actually didn't care for and I didn't think was that enjoyable was how warm the Diet Coke was in this food adventure. 
which I'm not gonna lie, it took a little bit to get used to, but also I gotta mention that by no means am I actually gonna blame the restaurant for this one, because first of all, I don't remember what the exact situation was, but I'm pretty sure they gave me a heads up on that, and I really don't think that they were trying to sabotage me, though I do stand firm on the fact that I thought they were pretty generous with the amount of chips they gave me. But you know what? I was not gonna let that be an excuse for me to stop attacking this fish and chips challenge with all kinds of violence, speed and momentum and doing what I had to do to finish this battle and come out on the tippity top. And if that's something you're down with, then I would greatly appreciate it if you took a few seconds to leave a little magic of your own by liking the video and leaving a comment or question down below so we can keep the conversation going. And also, if you want to watch this trip from the very beginning, you can find a link to this tour playlist in the description down below and I'll see you in the next food adventure.